In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Amen. We have a uh, good handful of martyrs today. Our two saints, St. Saint Cornelius and St. Cyprian, uh, but also uh, three commemorated martyrs, uh, all from the uh, uh, time of the early church. Uh, so there is St. Euphemia, and she was uh, fed to uh, wild beasts in the amphitheater. Uh, not too much is known about her life, but she gave it bravely for Christ. Uh, St. Lucy is, this is, uh, is commemorated today, and this is not the St. Lucy, like the Virgin Martyr, the feast day in December, that's a different St. Lucy. Uh, this one is uh, an older uh, woman, a matron, and she was denounced by her own son, uh, an act of great impiety, and a part of her martyrdom was being led through the streets, uh, supposedly to, uh, uh, to dishonor her and so on. However, as she passed by the house of a, a, um, a certain man, uh, Genominius by his name, uh, the, all the idols in his house shattered as, as she was processing by. So that, that greatly struck him. I mean, he knew what it was about. So he went out and, and sought out a priest and was instructed in the faith. Uh, St. Lucy uh, ended up uh, being martyred, ad, as would uh, St. Uh, Geminius. So, but we see there the example that uh, what, um, uh, what, what faith can do. And I think it was, I'm not sure if it was St. Euphemia or St. Lucy, but one of the two uh, was before uh, being um, martyred, uh, was thrown into boiling oil, and they were there for three days. And so then after, they, I guess they figured it out, this is not working, that's when they, they, they um, use a different means. But that's, that's always been the case with, with the martyrs. We hear that over and over again, is that uh, the attempts fail, or even their attempts to shame, uh, shame people into not becoming Christians ends up just propagating the faith more and more. So I have a feeling that's going to be happening uh, here to us pretty soon, the way things are going. Uh, but our, our actual, our, the feasts for today, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, uh, they're both friends. Uh, they're around the same time, around the year 250 is when they were active. Uh, Saint Cornelius was the 21st Pope, and uh, Saint Cyprian of Carthage uh, was one of the earliest of the Latin fathers of the church. Uh, in fact, one, one, um, uh, they have the Apostolic Fathers, and then the Greek Fathers, and then here are the Latin Fathers. He, he's the first one. There's Tertullian, uh, but he's not a saint. So Saint, saint Cyprian of Carthage, uh, one of the very first uh, um, of the Latin Fathers. Uh, but they were they both lived at a time of uh, was turmoil in the church uh, there's the, the the vicious persecution of the emperor decius was going on at the time and uh, previous to saint cornelius i think it was pope fabian had been martyred and uh, it was so the persecution was so great that they feared to elect another pope in fact the decius had thought uh, his his whole intent was to prevent the election of another pope because in his mind if the this this christian church is without a head, if they're without a leader, the, then it will fail, right? Uh, poor fools that the world is, uh, they don't know that Christ is our head, and you, you can never, he's, he's, he's risen from the dead, he can never be killed. So we will never ever be without a leader in the church, even if we don't have a pope. So uh, St. Cornelius, uh, the church had been without a pope, they hadn't elected one for about a year, and then finally in secret, uh, the bishops got together and they elected uh, Cornelius. Uh, however, he, um, uh, he had a difficult task ahead of him because in that time where there was no pope, uh, a man by the name of uh, Novation had started to exert authority. And he had gathered a lot of priests and even bishops around him, uh, specifically around the, the uh, controversy of what to do about those who had apostatized. Uh, they were called the Lopsy, right? Th those who had fallen. That's, that's the name uh, to fall, lop to Lopsy. And we use that today, right? A lapsed Catholic, uh, similar thing. They've lost the faith. So the question of, under these horrible persecutions, what ought the church, what should the church's position towards them be, right? Those who had shown cowardice, those who had uh, apostatized in the faith. Uh, so um, Novation's idea was uh, only God can forgive them. The church has no authority to forgive them. They've abandoned the faith. They've abandoned the church. They cannot be forgiven. Uh, so it's just between, between them and God. They've got to figure it out, but it can't be declared in this world. So that's, that was a, a rather harsh position, uh, and it's the wrong one. In fact, um, Novation has a heresy named after him, the Novation heresy. That's not a distinction you want to have. Uh, but um, uh, Cornelius and Cyprian, uh, together, they were writing that letters back and forth discussing the issue, and they understood, no, uh, this is a, a terrible sin, but it too can be forgiven with an appropriate amount of penance. And the penances weren't easy. It was things like, 
fasting on bread and water for a year, right? Or uh, for the next 10 years, uh, standing outside the front of the church doors and prostrating yourself before everyone who comes in begging their forgiveness. That's not an easy penance, right? Uh, so that's the kind of thing they were discussing. But they realized, yes, people can be forgiven, and, uh, and that's the, um, uh, the proper attitude of the church. But this is at a time, you know, in the 250s, uh, church doctrine hadn't yet been established. It was still up in the air, still kind of questionable. What is the answer to this? What, 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 are, what are the positions? And uh, St. Cyprian himself would, would get into a little bit of trouble later in life because although he rightly recognized uh, apostates can be forgiven and readmitted to the church, uh, later after, uh, after uh, Pope Cornelius with the next pope, uh, St. Cyprian would think that the baptism of heretics would not be valid. So if you were baptized by, say, a novation, right, or baptized in some other um, heretical sect or baptized by a pagan, uh, that wasn't valid. You had to be baptized by a Catholic in the church. Uh, we know now, of course, that's not true, right? Anybody can baptize you know, using any, any water. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, at one point, it wasn't clear. And so St. Cyprian, although he was uh, one of the fathers of the church, one of the, um, he was, he was uh, correctly defended the Pope on the issue of uh, forgiveness of heretics, he did it up on the wrong side of, of the other issue. So it just goes to show that um, it's not easy, right, in the church. And even those great uh, luminaries, we'd say, those great minds with brilliant theologians, they're not always correct on every single issue. Um, same thing happened to Thomas Aquinas. Uh, before the definition of the um, Immaculate Conception, he was on the wrong side of that issue. Hadn't been defined yet, so it was still up in the air. Uh, but uh, let's see, so St. Cornelius, um, he had a short-lived papacy for just for two years uh, before he was banished, exiled, uh, where he died due to, some accounts say, the harshness of exile caused his death, others that he was beheaded. Uh, but either way, he gave his life for Christ. And Cornelius, Pope Cornelius was not, um, he's actually mentioned in the canon. When we say uh, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, uh, Cornelius, Cyprian, uh, that's these two saints today. So you'll hear them in the canon uh, later. Uh, but Cornelius um, was not a very, uh, we can say he was not a rhetorician. He wasn't, didn't write in an elevated style. We have his letters back and forth. He wrote very uh, colloquially and familiarly, we could say, uh, not like Cyprian. Cyprian was a rhetorician and his, his style was very high. Uh, Cornelius was, was, was pretty common, and so that just shows that it wasn't, um, you know, the, the, the church doesn't, we don't have respect for persons. It's not about wealth, it's not about education, it's not about refinement, it's about sanctity, right? It, it's about um, love of God, and so even early, here in the early church, we, we see that. Um, and Saint Cornelius is an interesting little thing, too, was the first to mention exorcist in the church for the first time, uh, first to have that um, uh, office of exorcist. Uh, so St. Cyprian, for his part, we've, we've talked a little bit about him already, he was, had been a pagan rhetorician and uh, converted in his 40s. And then after his conversion, he was baptized, converted. Two years later, uh, he was a bishop. So that's, that's a rather quick uh, progression. Uh, but he was well suited for it. He gave away all of his uh, sustenance, I mean, all of his um, wealth. He had considerable wealth. He gave it all away, uh, took that, a vow of celibacy, and was an excellent uh, um, a bishop there of, of that city of Carthage and an excellent rhetorician. Um, he wrote uh, probably because of his, um, the struggles of Cornelius with, with novation and struggles over the papacy. And, and it, was a, it was really, it was a power struggle. Who were, you, who were they going to follow, novation or, or Pope Cornelius? Uh, and so Cyprian of Carthage wrote his work on ecclesiastical unity and the necessity of the faithful to be united with their bishop and all the faithful and the priests and the bishops to be united with the Pope in Rome. Uh, he was one of the first ones to write about that. That's why he, he's one of his great contributions. Um, so we see that even though Cornelius had a difficult time struggling with this, uh, God used it because, uh, uh, um, to give a witness of the faith. St. Cyprian, this is the year two, 250, right? Uh, this is very early in the church, and already there's talk about you must be united with Rome. Right? This is a testament against the Protestants, right? against anything other than the Catholic Church. You, you can't be united to God if you're not united to the Church. And there's a lengthy uh, quote he gives, which is very, very good, um, which is, uh, you can see his rhetoric coming out. Uh, so this is St. Cyprian. Whoever has separated himself from the Church is to be shunned. Such a man is perverted and sins and is condemned by his very self. 
Does he seem to himself to be with Christ, who acts contrary to the priests of Christ, and who separates himself from association with his clergy and his people? That man bears arms against the church. He fights against God's plan. Despising the bishops and abandoning the priests of God, he dares to set up another altar to compose another prayer with unauthorized words to profane the truth of the Lord's offering by false sacrifices, and not to know that he, he who struggles against God's plan on account of his rash daring is punished by divine censure. Uh, thus St. Cyprian. So very clear, you need to be united with the church in Rome. And that would be one of the things that um, very many of the church fathers, uh, especially later as heresies multiplied, they would point to this as proof that from the beginning it's been understood that you must belong to the church of Rome. And he also would say, uh, St. Cyprian, another quote of his, uh, uh, no one can have God for his father who has not the church for his mother. A uh, very, very succinct quote there, very good. Uh, so um, uh, eventually St. Cyprian himself would be martyred and uh, he was uh, brought before the judge and sentenced to martyrdom and they were going to take him away and execute him uh, elsewhere. But he said no, he, was, he, he demanded to remain in his city so that his martyrdom might be a good witness to his people. And in fact, when he was before, it was a big public spectacle, he was before the judge, and they asked him uh, to, to recant. Of course, he would not. And they gave him the sentence, um, it is a sentence of this court that you be executed with the sword. And St. Cyprian, repli Cyprian replied, uh, thanks be to God. And then they, they took him out of the city. Uh, he removed his vestments himself. All his vast multitude followed him. And he knelt down and prayed, blindfolded himself, and voluntarily offered himself to the executioner, uh, who then beheaded him. Uh, so thus the execution of St. Cyprian. Uh, so great example, right? Uh, five martyrs for today, uh, three uh, commemorated saints, not so well known, and then a pope and uh, one of the fathers of the church. Uh, this is our example. This is what we ourselves have to be prepared to do uh, in our own lives. And I, I keep saying this, and I'm going to repeat it. It's looking more and more likely, right, every day. Uh, the, the schools are not getting better. You know, children are still getting poisoned in their educational system uh, by the biggest terrorist group of them all, the National Education Association. Uh, that's, that's what we need to be prepared for, right? Is it, is it we need to, by our example, we need to be converting people. And it's not going to be by arguments or threats or fights. It's going to be with, with love and with charity. Uh, we may have to fight for the faith, uh, but it's going to be out of love, right? Out of, out of love and a desire to save souls, right? Not out of anger or uh, this infuriated sense of injustice, right? That's what they're doing on the other side. That will never work. Um, one of the examples from St. Cyprian was during a plague in his city, he instructed his faithful, you help everybody, whether they are heretics or even your persecutors, if they're sick of the plague, then you help them. Uh, and and that for that reason, it's called St. Cyprian's Plague in the city, uh, because he, he helped to make it uh, not so bad. People were so impressed by him. So, uh, like I said, we need to be ready, but, but, but we're ready. we ready ourselves with the love of Christ. So let us pray for that. Let us do our daily prayers. Spend time with God in prayer. And so that when it comes our time for martyr martyrdom, or whatever it may be, uh, he's spending time with us. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.